Good morning. It's Friday morning. It's not raining for a change, but it's very cold, windy, and partly cloudy. I uh, had my check engine light on a couple of days, so I wanted to make this video about this. In this 2001 Dodge Ram, um, this is a 1500 van, it has this uh, feature that I'm getting ready to show you. Okay, turn your key on. You, I got the key in, but I'm just going to cl click it not where anything comes on. One. Two. Three. And now, you see that? That is giving me a P code because I've had a check engine light on. And in this Dodge Ram van, you can do that. Turn your key three times, and then it'll show you what the code what the code is for this engine light. I've already done it, and I've checked it, and I know what it is. So, the P1494 is the um, is part of the EVAP system, which is the emissions. And in that case, it's, it's telling me that it's a purge uh, canister. Uh, not purge canister, purge valve solenoid that is bad. But when I checked it, I found that it's actually more vacuum tubing. So I went and got quarter inch elbow and a length of tubing about a foot long. And I'll show you what the problem is. And I hope that'll clear the code. If it doesn't, I'll have to buy one of those uh, little solenoids, which is about, mm, depending on where I get it, 30 to 45 bucks. So let's pull the hood latch. Out. This is a diagram. Oh, water just tripped on my camera. This is a diagram of the um, emission system. Uh, right over here. Uh, see that leak detection pump? That's where the tubing is has a hole in it. Right here coming from that solenoid so anyway that's a, a diagram to help you figure out where things are mine's under the hood okay that's the purge solenoid that little thing right there that I'm highlighting and the tubing that's coming off of it it's kind of hard to see because it's behind the steering column thing but let me see if I can zoom up. And I'm almost there. Just bear with me. See that split right there in the tubing? Right at that T. There's a split there. in a precarious spot behind that uh, steering column that's gonna be hard to get to so I'm gonna have to take something loose I don't know if I want to take loose the fuse box or this jug the jug might be easier just two bolts and move it over then I wouldn't have to disconnect my battery since this is not electrical so I think I'll try that This is the new short handle ratchet that I bought, which I think is going to come in handy. I could have used this doing my spark plug removal, where I couldn't do it because the handle on the other one is that long and didn't have the clearance. It has, uh, I guess that's three eighths and quarter inch sockets on it. Uh, I'm going to use it to loosen this. Finally got that out. It has two connectors, electrical connectors. This one here connects to the little pump on the side. Right here, it's a little tab you depress and just wiggle off. Wasn't as easy as that, but <laughs> sounds easy. And then, okay, the other one and get these wires out of the way and then attempt to get that off see it's that tube right back there behind the steering column 
And over here it'll be easier to get to. Now that I got that out of the way. I'll give you a better look at this uh, purge solenoid now. It's that little thing right there. See the little black thing? It has one electrical connector, two tubes, and it's mounted over here on the body somehow down there. I hope I don't have to take that off. So I'm going to disconnect this tube here first. I'm going to pull it off, use the razor knife, whatever, cut it. There's a connector in there you see that i got to retrieve. And then I'm going to pull it off that end where this at the T connector. This is not going to be easy because it's really been on there all these years, you know. There's the holes. There's a hole in the elbow, a split there on that end, another split on this end, and I got quarter inch fuel line hose. I was able to know it was quarter inch because I was I rubbed that off while it was still connected and I could see, it's, you know, barely see, quarter inch. Uh, this seems a little thicker, but anyway, it's going to have to work. And then I got the vacuum elbow. So let me stop and prep my thing. I'm going to take this joint out, this adapter out, put it in my hose, and get it on there. So I'm going to shove this one down in here until it gets all the way down. I'm going to try to. Maybe I should put a little oil in that. i go get a little bit of oil. So one thing I'm going to do is try to recreate that bulge a little bit. i just opening this up and flaring it a little bit with my pliers. And I hope that'll help me get it on there because I gave it one try and it was like really hard because uh, the tubing is not, that little T fitting is in tubing and when I push it just gives, you know, I have to hold two hands, one on one side and one on the other. I think that helps some. Let me flare it a little more. Okay, I'm going to try that. Okay, I'm back. It's kind of getting late. I don't know if I can get it done today. But I took the uh, jug out again. And there's the part. This is a Duralast. This is uh, PV300 is the part number. I bought myself a pair of gloves and look how much too big they are. It's just terrible. I won't be able to use them probably. So here it is. I gotta figure out this part, how it mounts on there. It looks like some kind of rubber thing. 
this is electric. The two tubes go there. Cut the tips off. <laughs> Maybe now I can use them. So there's the thing I gotta take out right there. black thing. Back there is the mounting doohickey. I think it just pulls off. But I think I'm going to disconnect the electric and the tubes before I try to pull it off. These tubes have been on a while. I hope I don't mess them up trying to get them off. I'm using the flat screwdriver just to kind of edge them back a little bit to get them started. Give them a little yank. Okay, now I'm going to give it a little yank. I hope it doesn't just fall down. There it comes. Oh, the wind. Strong today. I think it just slides down on this thing, as far as I know. Look how short the wire is on that. <laughs> it's extremely short. Yep. Okay. And there it is. I mean, it's really short. Uh, let me see if I can get a hold of it. Wiggle it out, I guess. Okay, there's my mounting bracket. Just blowing on it. See if anything happens. Nothing happened, so I don't know. Anyway. This is bottom, but mine was put in, yeah, that's right, mine was put in this way. Maybe it should have been put in that way. Okay, the vacuum hose went there. Ooh. I've got the mounting bracket back on, so I'm going to put it in correctly, the way the diagram shows. See, up like that and to the throttle body here. The other one with the service port goes back here. I'm trying to seat this on that metal clip that it sits on. Hammering it down. And that worked. Let's see if I can show you. Right there, that's where I got it. Thing right there, okay. Now I just gotta put the tubes on. Got them in place, now I'm trying to push them up as far as I can make them go. about where it was on the old one. Here. Oh, there's my flashlight. Okay, there's my new one. It's in. I wish I could push the pipes on a little further. I'm going to try that and then I'm going to go in and see if my code is clear. 
right? The only thing on is my seatbelt sign, which I don't really need to put on right now. Seems to be running about like normal. Okay, no check engine light. I'm back. Anyway, what do we say? Another $80 saved.